Hi, welcome to my first ArchiKid speed modeling tips tutorial, volume one. Okay, let's get started with my first tip. I'd like to show you how to rotate a column along a half arc and duplicate it exactly one meter apart. So what I do is, I draw a half an arc here. Oops, I need this one, there we go. And to make it a bit easier to show you, I just drag a copy for now out of here. All right, it just shows a bit clearer in this tutorial. I draw a line from here to here. You'll see in a moment why we need this. All right, so we take this column, split it one, one meter apart. Actually, I need first a circle. That shows me the one meter distance. So you go there, uh, one meter. All right. So this obviously is exactly one meter now. So let's take this column and we spread it out. Um, increment and spread, that's a new feature in uh, RK21. I'll show you after in RK20 or lower what you have to use. Um, I don't need to pick an arc, uh, but I like to rotate to the path. That's important. All right, click OK. Go into the middle here and we start spreading it from here to here. That's one meter and now it keeps going at one meter intervals. Now you're gonna be really lucky to have it exactly on that. So what I do is I usually take one less, there we go. Next step is to take this arc, go there, all right. And then we um, select our columns and delete everything apart from that one. Okay, just quickly, as promised, if you don't have RGK21 yet, what you have to do is, you sell it, and we go rotate still, and we go increment now, and we just have to guess an up number. I just, let's, let's just put 50 in, and we go then from the middle here, there, as you can see, that's already too many, so you have to go back and do it again. So it's a little bit more of a process. Not too bad. All right, let's do this here. There. There you go. Then you just delete those and go with the circle and reduce it to that. All right, let's get back to RK21. Okay, next thing we have to do is you have to rotate this arc. So we take it here, select, rotate, go from here, down here. Okay, so now we do the same thing. Okay, now you do exactly the same. One thing you should notice is that now obviously you can see that point is lower here, the middle point of the arc. So what I usually do is you take this and I rotate this to that arc. Let's try again there. Okay, so it's perpendicular to the arc now. Now we rotate that. We do the same thing again, we spread it, rotation to path, and make sure you're not going this one. We, we need this one here. See, it's a bit lower. There, one meter, there, and there. Perfect, this is exactly one meter apart now. Let's have a quick check. And we draw dimensions. So anyway, you go now. One meter, perfect. Let's undo that and drag it down. We're not quite finished yet. So you drag this down here to there. Be careful, you got a double one here, I don't need that one. Because as you can see, the one thing you have to adjust now is the slab. I'll show you quickly in 3D what we got. There, so obviously this doesn't fit now because I really want it exactly one meter intervals. So all you do is you take this and reduce it. There you go. There you go. Perfectly done. All right, so that's my first trick. All right, next tip. I've been doing this for 
what I have for Eva, can't even remember how. It's a really nice one. So what we do is we wanna change the design of this a bit, but we make a copy, wanna keep it and compare after. So I drag a copy just over here. And what we do is just, just very simple. And we um, drag this over here. I will take this, ungroup, and we just add you know, a couple of extra walls. I'll take my slab, change this. Oops, I want this one. Okay, first you take the attributes of the roof, then you do a space click. There you go, so you got that back now. Nicely done. Delete this. Have a look at this. There you go. Okay, cool. That's my second design. Well, let's see both designs together. And that's not good. I did not drag a copy, I just dragged it, which happens quite a lot if you're very fast, do shortcuts. And that's cool now. If I do, so if you start doing all the steps, you will lose the new design. So how to get it back? The very first design, well, that's, that's where the trick comes in. So you take this and we copy this. And now take back steps, keep going, going, going. Oh, there we are. And now, look at this. How cool is that? Paste it back in. Go into 3D. Oh, there, there. Both still there. Like magic. Come on, that's a pretty cool one. All right. Let's concentrate on the next trick on the roof. I like to add um, a gutter and a fascia. So let's have a quick look what we got here at the moment. Right, all right, it's just you know, all the way around the roof, which is at this now. Most of you probably would use the object and be going to you know, special construction accessory elements, and you know, you got a couple of gutter objects here now. They're good, but it'll take way too long to place them around because, as you can see, you know, the roofs are different lengths, so I gotta place them. Here, here, gotta stretch them all the way along, place another one, stretch it here. So, the, the better way to do is really uh, I use the profile manager. So, in my profile here, I've got a gutter and fixture. All right, I created this. There you go. It's important again, like always, you have to make sure you select and you have to override the surface if you want to. I've got here a fascia one, and if I click on this one, it's called gutter one. So those are the two materials. I can close that off again and go back here. So I use a beam, got custom and select my gutter and fascia. I leave this clear. I don't want anything else. I uh, put my roof layer, go out of here. And as you know, we can just space click on it. There you go. Let's see how that looks for now. There you go. Obviously it's too low because I didn't really check where it is. So I do that a lot. I just move it up in 3D again. It's much faster. So moving it up here. There you go. Uh, you can see that it's just so much faster than using those, um, those objects we have. Another thing is you can see now, obviously let's just say if you want to add a soffit underneath, let's select this. I go back into here and I created one with a soffit. There you go, let's have a look. Beautiful, see? Now you've already got a soffit underneath. Okay, see the gap, you know, I've just been traveling along here and have me exactly measured that off, but obviously I would have to extend the soffit a bit further. It is actually quite uh, quick to adjust. All you have to do is 
you measure quick way. The distance, but it's 250. And you go into your profile socket uh, in the profile and just take the marquee tool and you move it right 250 back you store the profile and you go back in here and now obviously it's extended towards the wall there you go to close that gap now the second bit which is really good and fast and compared to using objects the client comes back to you and obviously says you know what the roof overhang i don't really like it you know i've got 800 here i, I just want 400 so let's put that back in to 400 and there you go so we only have a 400 overhang roof now and just imagine you had library parts from the objects you have to go all the way around move them resize them stretch them it will just take way longer because now i can go back to my 2d drawing here i will take this one make sure you're not uh, or you have the group suspended and we just click in here and of course use this one and move it there and there we go what we have to do is obviously move it back up now you have to stop suspend the groups we got everything and we take this move it back up there you go done i mean yeah you know it's just unbelievable if you if you, if you make sure over the over the time um, over the next couple of months you will see I, I use profile manager okay i use this a lot and also the solid element operations okay so this is this is big tip you, you gotta get familiar with those two those two attributes um those that, that's just so powerful i mean they save you a lot of time i mean a lot a lot all right they have to become your best friends all right um what else can i show you let's do a bent or curved pathway all right first put a bit of grass in floors let's put it on terrain 500 thickness will do okay and you know just like that all right first thing we do you obviously have to cut out our grass as you can see it's overlaying here so just go to the slab space click it and here you move that out all right so that's the first step nicely cut out let's get back here all right i use a spline and i just make something up quite curvy What I want to do is next, I don't use the slab tool for this because what I want to do is I want an exactly two meter wide path. So we start off with the wall here, go in here. I want this two meters wide. Okay, and 200 thickness. And I want to start with minus 200. All right. I think that's great. Um, just give it a different uh, material. Let's put it in as a, on a pavement material. And here we also put this for now on pavements. Path, pavements. Let's put it on path. All right, obviously. Gotta make sure reference line uh, has to be in the middle. Okay. And now, as always, base click. All right, let's see what we got from there. Okay, so we got this. There you go. 
I want to do is I select this and I just extrude it a little bit. There we go. Now, as you know, because I use the wool, I can any time go in here. Oh, you know what? The path I should be really, really two and a half. And at that top, I just straight away. What I want to do is next, I want to cut a hole into it. Because I, I don't, I even so we could probably leave it like that, but it is just, you know, it's much better you cut it out than the cook be um, coming in the way later. So, our lovely solid element operation. So, I'm getting the target element, which is my grass, and I obviously pick the pathway as operator elements. I want to do this this time, I want to have to subtraction with downward execution. And we execute this one. There we go. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, beautiful cutout. Okay, again, maybe I show it this way, it's easier to see. Because we use the wall, let's make this one and a half. And the cut keeps cutting. Okay, it's just, again, it's just much, much easier. You have a lot of control when you change your design. To make this even more interesting or nicer, I actually created uh, with my profile manager the pathway. There we go. I'll show you quickly. It's just a normal pathway, two meters, and I put some curbing on the side. Or it could be, you know, it could be uh, stones. Alright, as we now select, so select the guy to here and we change this to our custom path. There you go. Now you maybe notice it moved. I should have really done this and put it in the middle. So that was that was my mistake. This one here, you should put it in the middle of the insert point. So let's just drag that one. That's the middle there. There, store profile. Go back into 3D. There you go, so it's back normal. And you can see it keeps cutting it out. Okay, that's the way you do a curved pathway in 3D at a certain width. All right, this was it for volume one of a tips and tricks tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll be back for volume two. Bye for now.